How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. November 22nd. Thanksgiving week. I know. You got plans? Just the kids will be around for oh, Thanksgiving, cooking. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I can, yeah, we're just hanging here in Glen Allen. Just Julie and uh, our two boys, Raj and Ty. Nice, nice. and quiet. Yeah. Yep. I'll probably pop in, serve the residents over in uh, Morning Glory. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me. Thank you, everybody, uh, who is out there um, viewing this live chat, taking 15, 20 minutes out of your precious holiday week um, to listen to what is our um, third navigation chat um, here today with Ann Hopper talking a little bit about helping hands. Uh, this one's a, a, a probably a brief um, navigation chat. We're not going to spend the whole 30 minutes, um, but uh, we do have some really critical information to impart. So uh, whether you are watching this live and or families that are residents watching this um, via video uh, on Touchtown, uh, if you have any questions about the content of this video, please feel free to uh, reach out and we will um, answer any and all of your questions over the next couple of days and weeks ahead. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is Ann Hopper. Ann is our wellness clinic um, nurse. Ann has been with Cedar Field uh, for about um, six years now. And um, prior to Ann uh, working at Cedar Field, um, she, she actually has had her license for about 12 years and the other six years that she has um, been utilizing that license has been a combination of uh, working at hospice for three years at a company called um, At Home, um, At Home Care. And um, Anne also worked in uh, a couple of nursing homes in the long-term care mm -hmm. uh, field um, as both a charge nurse on the floor, uh, similar to that of what we have on our healthcare area now, and uh, working as a MDS coordinator, which is that liaison that's um, a nurse that documents the care that is delivered so that um, CMS, Medicare, knows of the services that are provided. So Anne's been utilizing her license to the fullest, and we are just blessed to have Anne here for the last six years and for the next 26 years. <laughs> um, but we are here to talk a little bit about Helping Hands uh, program, and why don't you kick us off here and sure. let the folks know what what is Helping Hands at Cedarfield. All right, I'm happy to do it, hello. Uh, so this program was established as a temporary intervention for our residents that were going to move on to assisted living. Uh, the program was um, designed to provide the residents with temporary assistance to help maintain health, safety, and well-being while promoting their strengths just until there's an apartment available. So. Oh, good. Okay. And uh, for for clarification purposes, what is not uh, Helping Hands? That's a good question. So home care, home health, uh, therapy, hospice services, that is not a part of the Helping Hands program. Oh, good. Okay. So let's, um, and probably, and Bonnie and uh, other folks, social workers uh, in the clinic, they, they're always instead of just questions about helping hands, they're, they're always faced with um, scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, the residents have a, a lot of different scenarios about um, kind of trying to, trying to feel their way through this um, services and amenities that we have at Cedarfield. We're, off, we're often um, questioned in a scenario format. So I guess the first, one of, one of, one of the most Two of the most uh, important um, or frequently asked scenarios that we get are, one, what if I'm in healthcare and I just 
I just received some surgery. I go to our healthcare area and then I come back to independent living. Is that under that scenario would I would I qualify for helping hands? No, Michael, you would not. Uh, we have other programs that you would be would, would be available for you, but Helping Hands would not be one of them. Okay. Once again, that goes along with assisted living, but we've got um, a home health company, we've got um, therapy, so we have other programs that would be designed to help a person going back to their apartment. Okay. Uh, what I uh, the other most frequently asked scenario is, what um, I just went to the hospital. I'm, I'm at um, St. Mary's or Parham Doctors Hospital, or and I've been there for a couple of days. And I'm I'm coming straight back to independent living apartment and or a cottage. Um, can I call you and can you enact helping hands to help me during the transition? So I would welcome you calling me. And what we can do is, while I cannot offer helping hands, once again, there are other programs that we can help with. And that would be, you know, if we used um, a home health company, you could have a nurse and their team go out to either the apartment or cottage, which would be more beneficial than, say, the helping hands program. Okay. So we, we meaning myself, social work, we could be involved so that we make that transition smooth. Okay. for when you end up going back. Great. And do you tell people when they have to move to assisted living? Is Ann Hopper and the clinic absolutely mandating <laughs> no. that people move to... Oh, okay. No, so no. We're, it's a team. It's collaboration. We have a whole host of team members from therapy to social work to the resident themselves. Um, and we meet and we discuss it and sometimes family members will call say after the holidays mm -hmm. there could be some concern about their loved one mm -hmm. how they're doing and what could we help them with to boost them up whether it is staying in independent living or is it time and if it's time it's not okay you're moving next week we have assessments that we have done you know different different groups whether it's a speech therapy for cognition physical therapy to see how strong someone is um, and maybe therapy is what they need just mm -hmm. to give them that boost up so it's not just me making the decision oh good good so it's very collaborative is yes. what you're saying excellent so this is uh, Ann just referenced um, during the holiday season mm -hmm. uh, is is usually uh, a period of time between September and January when we see a spike in phone calls. Right. And why is that again? Could you just refresh everybody? Why do we see a, a spike in phone calls from residents and or the family members? So maybe they haven't seen each other in a while. And so you get together and all of a sudden you think, oh, you know, my mom or dad is maybe not as strong as they used to be or maybe just the whole pandemic Mm -hmm. has definitely, we've seen, has taken a toll, the isolation alone. Right. And that's when we had helping hands involved. Yeah. So. That's true. So there, um, just to kind of go back a little bit, we, we did use our helping hands program over the last 18 months, a little bit different than what Ann just described as uh, the purpose of it. Um, particularly all of last year and probably the first couple of months of this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really all hands on deck to keep people safe um, and get people as much as we could to them in their apartment. And so we did, over the, the first half of this pandemic, stretch a little bit beyond what the Helping Hands program was designed to do. Right. Um, really because we were looking for people that could help in a variety of capacities. So, uh, and Helping Hands was one of those natural departments to turn to, um, to help us with a variety of things as we were trying to do as much as we humanly possibly could to, uh, right. to help residents while they were cooped up in their cottage or their apartment. Yeah, that was a rough time. Yeah, very, very rough time. Mm -hmm. I will never forget it. So speaking of collaboratively, um, if a resident needs assisted living, 
um, and or can't get there yet because the apartment's not identified, what do you all do? How do you all collaboratively work with that resident? So what we would end up doing is uh, we have a team of social workers, Kathy Moran and Christina Craig. They come in. Um, we get together and meet with the resident. We um, once again go over assessments and discuss the whole transition of moving to assisted living. And it's not something that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So it takes some time to get this coordination, get it all set up. And in that time, while um, the resident is planning moving to assisted living, we would have helping hands come in to help because at that point, you know, they've been identified, they're gonna to go to assisted living, and so they might need help with a meal. They might need to make sure that their medications, there's oversight that they are taking them properly. Okay. So helping Good. hands would step in at that point. Okay, It's Great. short term. Short term, good, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and somebody, a resident, their, their abilities are changing Everyone's abilities are really changing throughout our whole lifetime. We mm -hmm. we're always um, we're always looking to aid successfully, no matter where we're at uh, and how old we are. Um, and so, but particularly the residents who live at Cedarfield, they're, if their abilities are changing and they're looking for uh, they're looking for advice from y'all about how to navigate around the amenities of Cedarfield and to aid successfully, um, would they be eligible for Helping Hands? Or how, how would you handle that? No, basically there's a lot involved in um, the whole navigation process for our residents and it is confusing and that's why we say call the clinic and between the social work team, myself, we can figure out you know, where are we starting, what's the goal, what's the plan, and then we can come up with the appropriate um, plan, you know, whether it's just an outpatient therapy, a home health company, um, you know, whatever assessments, is it time to think about moving through the continuum, or maybe they just need a private caregiver in for a few hours, a couple of days a week, just to give that boost. But we can work through it, it's not just set oh, we do this, it's more designed specific for each resident okay, great. based on their needs. Great. You met, You keep mentioning this term care plan meeting. Uh, is that an extra charge for the resident? No, it sure uh, isn't. Okay. How does, what, what's, the, what's a care plan meeting? Basically, a resident can call and just say, hey, you know, I have this two-page document that you had put out a while ago and it lists everything. Well, there's so much in there from our doctors to say dispatch health if you're sick on a weekend and someone looks at it and says what the heck is this there's so much there we can meet and discuss whether it's for a resident their spouse any type of changes what we can detail a plan of care specifically for the resident or that spouse of you know what can we do to help keep someone independent okay do i have to wait until my, I see my health care needs changing before I schedule this care plan meeting with you? No, no. In fact, right. it's probably good to do it right away. Once again, it's always nice to have a baseline. It's nice to meet us before there's any type of trouble or, you know, any concern so that we know each other and then we can go from there. And obviously there are times when things happen quickly and we're there too but it's nice to meet before there's any type of problems. Oh, that's great, that's great. So are you telling me that the residents can contact you and your team to um, just talk about this care plan? Right. And part of their monthly service fee is access to y'all to work on preventative things right. to help a resident navigate the amenities and services of Cedarfield to aid successfully. Is that true or false? That is absolutely true. Okay, good. Yep. Good. And, you know, like we say, we have different assessments. Even someone that comes in, I'm young and healthy. You can have um, a head to toe assessment, you know, through a therapy department, and they can just work on things, whether it's balance, strengthening. So it's not like we said, oh, you're going to assisted living. 
So it's all just to benefit the resident. Yeah, that's great. Um, and Karen, kind of let's switch back to Helping Hands. Um, who, who is managing the Helping Hands department these days? I am managing it now. Oh. So oh, we okay. have um, Gracie. Uh, she works 12-hour shifts. And opposite Gracie would be Tanyelle, who came from assisted living. And so they are out um, going to Helping Hands apartments. And then when they're not, they're in the clinic helping Bonnie, which Bonnie certainly can use the help um, answering the phones, too. So we have a nice little group in the clinic now mm. to support everyone. Wow. So are you the only nurse in there right now? That's a lot of work. Uh, we have support, actually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've got Lori Shepard who comes back and Nancy Rhodes, and we have an agency nurse who's coming in, oh. and we're um, advertising for another nurse. Cedarfield is advertising to help you in the clinic mm -hmm. navigate all. Okay, good. Yeah. That's great. Good. Good, good, good. Um, let's see if there's any questions that have come in. Bear with me for one second. Uh, one of the questions came in, is the clinic or the resident responsible party or the contracting home, uh, home health, hold on a second, is the clinic or the resident responsible for contacting home health when the resident is in need of the services? Oh. That's a good question. We do need a doctor's order. So the resident can contact their own primary care doctor to get an order for this home health agency, um, or they can call the clinic and we can reach out to their doctor, whether it's an in-house doctor or a community doctor. Okay. But we do need an order for home health. Okay, good. good. Do you need an order for helping hands? Yes, we do. How? We do. We, need we, we get that from the doctor, too, okay. to come on. Good, yeah. good, good. Is uh, one last question about Helping Hands. Is Helping Hands a licensed no. service provided here at Cedarfield? No, no, oh, okay. we are not part of any licensed program. Okay. And that's that's the whole crux of this, that we have to be very careful what we can do because it's not a licensed program it's not a license. in independent living. Okay, good. Um, and then a couple other kind of closeout items. Uh, we talk a little bit about this, navig we keep talking about this navigation team. Uh, again, just for clarification purposes, what is, when you think of navigation and the team of people that you have, what, what is that, how does that help a resident in independent living, apartments or cottages? Uh, basically having social work, myself, um, it's a lot when someone moves in. Just transition trauma alone is a lot for a resident. Um, downsizing. You know, being in a what we call the big house, being in an apartment, all of a sudden you're surrounded by a lot of people as opposed to being in, you know, their home in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Uh, maybe someone's moving in and their spouse has memory problems. That's a big deal. You know, they're thinking, I came to Cedarfield, I need help, and they don't realize I need help right now. So all that could be so overwhelming to yourself that knowing that you moved in here and we're here to help. Um, so it could be something as little as, you know, this is a tough move, I need someone, um, to you need our psychiatrist because there's um, the spouse with memory problems. And maybe I didn't think it was so bad, but they're moving along in this process, what do I do? And so instead of sitting back saying, what now? The clinic, we can help with all these we trying to lift people up so we do this a lot right with our hands right. um, and we're just trying to offer the services that we have and since it's so complicated it's let's meet and figure out exactly what someone needs that's great that's great that's wonderful mm -hmm. so I know uh, my bride Julie she's a she's a speech pathologist um, so obviously I do not have a nurse in my own home, but the residents of Cedarfield, whether you live in the cottages or the main, uh, main apartment building here, you have the fortune, and you pay for it, it's in part of your monthly service fee, you have a nurse, a RN, in charge of the clinic uh, in your own home, 
and hopefully you've gleaned a little bit of of our wishes here that we um, we would hope and pray that residents take advantage of the clinic in a proactive way while we're here to support the residents um, during an emergent situation or as things might be spiraling temporarily or permanently uh, our job which is why we're going down this whole education plan here in the last couple of months our job is to help lift up the strengths of the resident, tap into some services and amenities, right. and help people aid successfully, mm -hmm. proactively. And so I would encourage you, uh, many people many people probably know you already at this point, but my question to folks are how many of you have proactively tried to maybe even set up a meeting with Ann to talk about what your care plan looks like right now before something becomes emergent. How many right. people do you think have done that Not in the lot. last like six months? Not a, lot. Not a lot, maybe a handful or two. Okay, the last yeah. couple ones that we've done in the last three months, how have they gone? They've been, I think they've been helpful. You know, sometimes things happen right away. So um, I imagine it is helpful to the resident because it's, it's a lot. You see their resident handbook, it's a lot to try and get through, so they get a couple of people that they can talk to yep. to get them on the right path. Yep. So. Well, great. That, um, that concludes our little navigation chat here about Helping Hands. If anyone has any questions about Helping Hands um, and or how the clinic can help you um, set up a care plan or talk about navigation, uh, we, are, we are here for you. We are, we are trying, we are, our goal here is trying trying to strengthen service and amenities for for the residents so that you have a health care delivery system um, that you can rely on uh, today, tomorrow, and, and months ahead in a very proactive way. And so please feel free to reach out to administration and or the clinic for any questions related to Helping Hands. Uh, just I want to plug in one more navigation chat. Uh, this will be the fourth um, out of six uh, in our series of navigation discussions. Um, our next one is coming up on December 2nd at 10 o'clock. Um, that navigation chat is with Penny from Health Pro uh, Heritage. She's the director of outpatient rehab and she'll be here to talk um, about um, about the nursing ser the, about the PT, OT, and speech services related to um, outpatient therapy. So that should be Helpful. a good, lively discussion for at least 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So mark your calendars, uh, please, December 2nd at 10 o'clock. Otherwise, um, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we hope you all, if you are traveling, please be safe um, and a safe return home. For those of you that are um, staying local and or uh, taking advantage of our uh, Thanksgiving dinner here, um, look forward to seeing you around the community. For those of you that we do not get to see here in the next uh, couple of days, happy Thanksgiving. Best wishes to you. And again, as we would said on the, the live chat last week, we are so incredibly grateful that you, the resident, um, have chosen Cedar Field as your place uh, to call home for without you here uh, we we really can't uh, live out our vocation in life of being in and around people 65 years of age and better so happy thanksgiving everybody and we'll see you during our next chat thank you